and all of a sudden, out of the blue, Kevin's there. In the form of a protection, protection, protection in myself and made myself indispensable to her. Yeah. Why do you think I can't let go? A case that was a, an intelligent uh, 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 young woman, very good mind, where one could expect easily that she would see that I am not the, the, the parental authority. What are you saying, Mr. Perfect? But she was utterly unable to, uh, to get out of this delusion. Uh, and in such, in such a case, one, uh, one always has recourse to the dreams. One, it is just as if one would ask the unconscious, now what do you say to such a condition? You see, she says of the unconscious, of course I know you are not my father, but I just feel like that, it is like that, it, 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 I depend upon you. What? Mm -mm. Uh, and I say, now you see what the unconscious says. Now the unconscious produced dreams in, in which I really assumed a very curious role. You know, uh, she was the little infant, she was sitting on my knees, I held her in my arms, I was a very tender father to the little girl, you know. Where have I been? Where have I been? I'm confused because... I'm, I'm confused because... I feel like I've been missing out. What happens is that the person who has a low opinion of himself develops a relatively suave way of manifesting, if not inferiority to significant other people, at least such blatant hints of inferiority that he becomes more or less an object of philanthropic concern on the part of the other person. He's too cool and too smooth for me. Something's up. This guy. See? And, uh, uh, and more and more, her dreams became emphatic in that respect. Namely, that I was a, a, a sort of child, and, uh, and she is a very little, frail human uh, thing, you know, and uh, a, quite a little girl in the hands of an enormous being. The story is, last time we went out, Kevin got mad because our wanted to have a longer good time and I partied a little bit too much. You know that I'm not allowed to wear hoop earrings, right? Yeah, two years ago she told me that hoop earrings were her thing and that I wasn't allowed to wear them anymore. Kevin just wasn't feeling it at all and he was being a little bit of control freak. I didn't like that too much. He was being a little bit of control freak. I didn't like that too much. But he also could put her in her place. If I invite you to the prom and you look at me and say nothing, that silence that you're giving to me is a very powerful communication. Welcome to the sexual love fest of I'm okay, you're not so okay. Can you have good sex? Can you have good sex? Like, well, I think we do. Controlling silence from Kevin indicates that the sex is something less than that in his eyes. It's a degrading for her. Can you have good sex? Like, well, I think we do. I mean, the, the impression I came away with was that it would be wrong to have uh, adult thoughts about Britney Spears. I mean, she may be 21, but she seems, again, young, in a nice way. And you are rewarded. Haven't you ever seen people upset you and walk away satisfied? You're making them a little stupid. No, I'm not. I'm not making them look stupid at all. Why come back in here? I'm not coming back anymore. In this entire oh-so-real reality show, this is the only time Kevin appears genuinely pleased and happy. I'm not making it look stupid at all. Why come back in here? I'm not coming back anywhere. Ding dong, which is it? I don't know 
what was with him, obviously, but that made me a little bitter. Are you sad, Mr. Perfect? I didn't like that too much. Yeah. you, turn the camera. What? No. Oh. I was just being rebellious. Uh, and the last dream of that series was, I cannot tell you all the dreams, yeah. was that I uh, uh, was out in nature. I stood in a field of wheat, in an enormous field of wheat that was ripe for house. And I was a giant. And I held her in my arm like a baby. And the wind was blowing over that field of wheat. Now you know when the wind is blowing over a wheat field, these waves in the wheat field. Yes, yes. And with these waves, I swayed like that, uh, putting her as if it were to sleep, you know. A fugue, in the sense in which I use the term, is literally a prolonged state of dreaming while awake. That is, one acts a dream with every conviction that one is awake, and one actually is awake as far as a bystander can tell. Fugues are often part of the onset of some very serious mental disorders. But anyway, when one is in a fugue, as I am trying to describe it, one believes one is awake and one acts as if one is awake in many important particulars and everyone else presumes one is awake. But the relationship to circumambient reality and to the meanings to which things attach from one's past is to a certain extent as fundamentally and absolutely suspended as it is when one is asleep. There it was printed on the invitation. Surprise, you were invited to the wedding. What people thought was going to be the engagement party wound up being the actual wedding. Nice, big surprise. I'm waiting for him to say something, congratulations or something, and he didn't say anything. You haven't read the invitation yet? No, I just looked at it. You, you might want to read it. You might want to read it. And finally, we <laughs> figured out that he didn't read it, you know, and they told him, well, you might want to go back and read it again. Hmm. Yeah, that makes a little difference. He turned around and walked off. Don't do that. <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay, I didn't know whether he was mad or happy or... Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay, I didn't know whether he was mad or happy. Don't do that. <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay, I didn't know whether he was mad or happy or, you know. That was the biggest shocker to me. <laughs> Baby. I think, what was I thinking, is the first question a person who starts to examine themselves asks themselves. I used to be a cool chick. Um, I, in the past, I made the mistake of making someone a god, a, a man, and... Everybody's made that mistake. Well, I have to suffer. I feel like it hurts. I'm suffering for it. You take I your identity. It. You take your identity from the process of making somebody a god. I am where I am today is because I do have control. You know, and you just you just control what you do. You know, you have to. Otherwise, you get sucked in by people that are not necessary. Teenagers, when they're about to go off to college, they kind of get a sense of that feeling of being overprotected because, you know, it was just a matter of my mom respecting the fact that I'm becoming a woman and my dad just trusting me. Nobody knows, not our parents. Well, <laughs> His guy buddies came. Weasels, yes. And, and she, feel, she felt uh, as being in the arms of a, of a god of, of, of the Godhead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thought, no, now, now the, the harvest is ripe. Yes. And I must tell her, 
And I told her, you see, what you want and what you project into me, because you are not conscious of it, is you, you, you have the idea of a deity. You don't possess. Therefore, you see it in me. Yeah. Uh, that clicked. She suddenly became aware of an entirely heathenish uh, image yes. uh, that comes fresh from the archetype. She had not the idea of a Christian God uh, or of a uh, Old Testament Yahweh. Uh, it was a heathenish God, you see, a, a, a God of nature, of vegetation. He was the wheat himself, he is the spirit of the wheat, uh, the spirit of the wind. And she was in the arms of that Newman. Why did you have to be so wonderful? I found myself me. Now, that is the living experience of an archetype. Now, that made a tremendous impression upon that girl. And instantly, it clicked. She saw what she really was missing, that missing value, that, that was, was in the form of a projection in myself and made myself indispensable to her. Yeah. They have to confound and confuse and lie love. This is the key to the kingdom and this is the town. This is the black hearts that lead you uh, around. And then she saw it is not indispensable because it is, as the dream says, she is in the arms of uh, that uh, archetypal yes. uh, idea. Now, that is a luminous experience. You see. And, and that is the thing that uh, people are looking for. Yes. The, an archetypal experience that gives them uh, uh, an incorruptible value. You see, they depend upon other conditions, they depend upon desi their desires, their ambitions, uh, depend upon other people, because they have no value in themselves. They have nothing in themselves. They are only rational, and, and, and they are not in the possession of a treasure that would make them independent. But when that girl can hold that uh, experience, then she doesn't depend anymore. She cannot depend anymore because that value is in herself. And, and uh, that is a sort of liberation. Yeah. And that is, of course, uh, makes her complete, you know. Uh, in as much as she can realize such a numinous experience, she is able to continue her path, her way, her individuation. The acorn can become an oak uh, and, and, and not a donkey. <laughs>